So last time we got our project template up and running and we looked at some of the example sequences. In this video, we're going to prepare some artwork for our comic. Well, before we prepare some artwork, we first need to create some artwork. I won't spend too much time on this because it really depends on your drawing style and what tools you like to use, but I'll show a bit of my process and give some general tips but you should just do whatever works for you. So I tried a few different workflows for creating art and what I settled on was sketching in Procreate on my iPad and then inking in a pixel art app called Pixaki and then moving to Photoshop on my computer to clean things up and export them for the play date. I wrote a little bit about how I arrived at this process on my dev blog. So I like to start drawing in Procreate just because I've used it for a long time, I like it, and I'm familiar with it. And I think that starting my drawings in a normal drawing app like this, where I can use sort of pencil-like tools, helps me keep my drawings fluid and hand-drawn instead of drawing in a pixel art app, which I find can constrain my drawings to be too computery. When I first started drawing these comics, I was drawing everything at high resolution, but I learned that it's better for me at least to keep everything at the final playdate resolution, which is 400 by 240, really tiny. Working at that low resolution, even for these early sketches, gives me a pretty good idea of how big things will be and how much detail I can include so I don't focus on adding a bunch of details to something that ends up getting sized down to like a four pixel blur in the final output. And I've also found that it works best, at least for my comics, to make most of the panels the full size of the Playdate screen. You can make them smaller to have two or even more panels on screen at once, or larger so that you have to scroll to see the full panel, but most of the time, a single full screen panel is what works best for these comics. Once I have a sketch for my panel, I bring it into my pixel art app. This is where I do the final inking for the drawings. So here I'm using only black and white because that's all the Playdate screen will support. So no grays or gradients. And at this stage, I'm also separating out the drawing into the separate layers. So I need to already have a pretty good idea of anything in these panels that I want to animate and which layers will have parallax separation so I can keep them on separate layers. And I don't do a lot of frame by frame animation in my comics, but there are also animation tools in that Pixaki app that I can use for that when I need to. So once I have a finished drawing from my pixel art app, I'll bring that into Photoshop to export the final images that will go into my comic. So I'll start with a pretty simple example first. So I have my image here and I'm just gonna save this whole thing as a flat PNG just to show how images get imported into the comic. So here I am in my project folder. I'll go into source, into images, and I like to organize my images by sequence. So each sequence will get its own folder. You don't have to do that, but even for a pretty short comic, you're going to generate a bunch of images. So you should have some system for keeping them organized. My system is a folder for each sequence. And then I name the image with a letter to indicate which panel this is for, a number for which layer this will be in the panel, and then a name so I know what this image is when I'm working with it in the data file. So this goes in sequence one, it's the first panel, panel A, it's the first layer in that panel, and it's a picture of the man. Now that I have that image saved, I can go to the comic data file in my project and add that image to my comic. So in our template project, the comic data file we're working with is called my comic data. And in this file, since it came from the project template, I already have two sequences here. And each of those sequences has two panels. 
all these panels are empty so far. And we'll get more into how this comic data is laid out in the next video. But all I want to do now is just add a layer to this first panel that pulls in that image I just saved. So the image got saved in the source folder, in the images folder, in this S1 folder, and there's my PNG. But notice the path that I list on my layer is relative to this images folder. So I just include the subfolder, S1, and then the image name. I don't need to specify that whole path. Now if I save this and run, I'll go into chapter one and I see I've got my image that I just exported. And if I scroll this, I can see that second blank panel. So you could, if you wanted, create an entire comic like this with just a single flat image for each panel. And you could even add a bit of parallax to this single layer. So that as I scroll this panel, you can see that image kind of drifts within the frame. That looks pretty cool. And again, you could create your whole comic that way, but we can do a lot more with our panels if we split these images into multiple layers. So let's go back to my drawing. What I want to do here is save out a separate image for each of the layers in this file. Luckily, I drew this using multiple layers. If you drew this as a flat image, then you have some work to do to separate things out into layers. My file is already layered, but it does have some problems. So you can see I already separated this out to have a layer for my character, a layer for the doorway behind him, this wall structure behind that, and then this background wall in the very back. But when I drew this, I didn't bother drawing the part of the background that goes behind the character because it's behind my character. You don't see it. But if we're going to have these layers scrolling independently, then at least part of this layer is going to become visible as my character moves. So I need to make sure that I draw in that part of the background. I've actually already done that, so I can just switch that on. And now we can see the second problem, which is that for some parts of this character, I only drew the black outlines and I left most of this layer transparent. You can see that a little better if I turn off these background layers. So if my character is going to be moving around over different parts of this background, then I need to make sure that areas like this are filled in completely with white so the background doesn't show through as he moves around. So if I fill in those areas with white, now you can see I have a fully opaque character and a fully drawn background behind him so that as he moves, he obscures what's behind him and the parts that are revealed are fully drawn. So now I'm going to save each of these layers as a separate PNG file. And I'll use the same naming scheme. So I'm putting these into the sequence one folder. This is still panel A. It's the first layer and it's the background. I'll do the same for these other layers, making sure that I turn off the background layer behind them and save everything with transparency so that the blank areas will show through the layers behind them. And now I'll add each of these files to my comic data as a layer in this first panel. This is where that naming scheme helps because I can tell which image should go on which layer by how it's numbered. This panel will get built back to front, so the background layer goes first, and then the layers that appear in front of that get listed afterward. And if I run this and go into my first chapter, we can see it doesn't look any different than the flat version. And that's because I set all of these layers to have the same parallax value. This is the value that determines how much the layer will drift within the panel as you scroll. So these parallax values go from zero to one. 
you can play around with these to find the exact values you want, but as a rule, the higher values will be used for background layers and the values get lower as you move up the layer stack. So the farther away something is, the higher its parallax value will be. So I can change that parallax value to be slightly different for all these layers. And now if I run this, we can see we get a nicer depth effect as I scroll because each layer is moving independently. So one other thing to note about preparing these images, if you've sliced up images for the web or for game development, you might be used to cropping things down to the minimum size, cutting out all this extra transparent area from the image. And you certainly can do that here with these comics, but if you do that, that means you also have to specify the location of the image within the panel, which you can do, it's not difficult, you just set an X and a Y property for the layer. But these images are so small, they don't take up a lot of space in terms of file size. And in most cases, the Playdate can perform just fine dealing with full frame images for everything. So I find it's easiest just to save everything as full frame with the transparency kind of baked in. And by doing that, I can leave all my layers just positioned at zero, zero and not have to worry about measuring and specifying the position for each layer individually. So now I just need to go through and finish exporting all the layers for the rest of the drawings. And then I'll be ready to start building some sequences in my comic data files.